Hey guys, it's Metagosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. We continue our biochemistry playlist. We're talking about vitamins. The last video was vitamin B12. Now it's time for vitamin C or the ascorbic acid. With that said, now let's get started. I will tell you 12 stories and please try to find the common thread. During the era of voyages, 40% of sailors used to die after they bleed from their gums and they bleed from everywhere. Next, we have a nine-year-old girl with severe hypertension and doctors were doofuses, they could not figure out why. A patient was complaining of bleeding. The doctor did this test to him. He wrapped the blood pressure cuff around his arm, inflated it to somewhere between systolic and diastolic, so let's say 100 or something, and waited for about five minutes. And inside that doozy circle here, which is the diameter of a quota, the patient developed lots of petechiae. Next, we have a 29-year-old male with saddle ecchymoses and hemarthrosis bleeding into joints. And he smelled so bad, he smelled like two dead fish having sex together. This patient lived on canned spaghetti and meatballs, pastries and beer. Doctors thought, oh, maybe it's a nutritional deficiency. Let's refer him to an expert in the field, a freaking nutritionist. The nutritionist said everything is fine. Never trust a nutritionist. The diagnosis was missed for three weeks. Story number five comes from New Zealand in the first half of the 20th century. Formula-fed infants develop this kind of petechial rash and hemorrhages, elevated periosteum and bony tenderness. They were misdiagnosed, never trust a freaking pediatrician. Next, we have an infant after experiencing a head trauma presented with periorbital hemorrhages and scalp bruising. He was also misdiagnosed. Next, let's go to 2002 Australia. 10% of senior citizens admitted to a care of the elderly department showed symptoms of petechiae, purpura, ecchymosis, bleeding gum, and corkscrew hair, as you see right here. Doc, look at my hair. I don't like it, mate. Here is another kid with transverse ridging of teeth. If this is the molar or the premolar or whatever, and this is the biting surface, you see those ridges, transverse ridges. And of course, the freaking dentist did not know what's up. Next, we have another kid with the eyeball bulging forwards bilaterally due to retroorbital hemorrhage. This bulging is known as proptosis. Another patient presented with vitreous hemorrhage and subdural hemorrhage. A 26-year-old male at the armed forces, thank you for your service, presented with gastrocnemius muscle tear. Went to the hospital, the doofuses at the hospital did not know what's up. Six weeks later, the freaking dermatologist figured out the cause of the gastrocnemius tear. The surgeons missed it, the freaking family doctor missed it, the rheumatologist missed it, only the freaking dermatologist figured it out. This is when you know that there is always hope, there is just no chance. The last story is about a premature infant with these discolorations. Look at this, black skin around the eye, black tip of the nose, black cartilage in the ear, hyperpigmentation everywhere. If this kid passes away and we do an autopsy, we'll see black bones. What is this? Oh, I know medicosis. This is an inherited condition known as alcaptinuria. You're very close, but here it was not alcaptinuria. What all these patients have in common was vitamin C deficiency. Just by giving them vitamin C, many of them improved tremendously. So if you want to be a good doctor, you better get your head out of your sphincter. Hey, Medicosis, where did you get these stories from? From the best medical textbook ever, Sapira's Art and Science of Bedside Diagnoses. Harrison's Internal Medicine did not have these stories. Davidson's did not. Goldman Cecil, nope. Up to date is not up to date enough. Only Sapera's did it. If you have not read Sapera's, please do not consider yourself a doctor. Sorry if I hurt your feelings. Because as the art of medicine is being lost, the science is also threatened. So today we'll talk about vitamins in general, vitamin C in particular, the chemistry of vitamin C, sources, metabolism, and deficiency, what causes scurvy, clinical picture of scurvy, diagnosis and treatment of scurvy, and what happens during hypervitaminosis C. 
As I've told you a bazillion times in my biochemistry playlist, vitamins are called vitamins because we thought that they are vital amines. Organic molecules, micronutrients, and they are essential. Your body cannot make them, therefore you have to eat them in your diet. Vitamins are divided into water-soluble and fat-soluble. Vitamin C, as you see, is water-soluble, therefore deficiency is more likely, toxicity is less likely. Throughout history, scurvy was way, 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 way more common than hypervitaminosis C. B1 is thiamine, B2 is riboflavin, B3 is niacin, B5 is pantothenic acid, B6 is pyroxin, B7 is biotin, B9 is folate, B12 is cobalamin, vitamin C is the ascorbic acid. And if you look at this nice bottle of multivitamins, you see vitamin C here, 60 milligrams, which is about 67% of your daily requirement. Hey, Walmart, you can do better. So, for most people, taking 100 milligrams of vitamin C every day is perfect. There are some variations and it depends on your age, but this is a good rule of thumb. These are the functions of vitamin Bs from B1 to B12. Vitamin C has many names. It's ascorbic acid, anti-sorbutic factor because scurvy is known as scorbitus. So this is the anti-scorbitus factor, or you can call it the ascorbate. Chemically speaking, vitamin C is an anadiol lactone of an acid. Who cares? It's a strong acid. No kidding. By the way, L-ascorbic acid is active. This is the one that you find in lemon, lime, oranges, etc. However, the D-ascorbic acid is inactive. It is useless when it comes to treating scurvy. So when you squeeze some lemon and eat them, it gets absorbed here in your intestine and goes to your bloodstream. From the blood, it will go to most tissues, specifically your pituitary gland, adrenal gland, and many, many other tissues. But it's not gonna be stored in the liver for long. If you do not get vitamin C for a month, you might start to suffer some symptoms of scurvy. Next, who's gonna get rid of the vitamin C? Your kidney. Why? Because it's water-soluble, and the kidney can get rid of anything that's water-soluble for you. Moreover, ascorbic acid gets metabolized into oxalic acid. Oxalic acid will be excreted in the kidney. If you eat tons of vitamin C, and I mean tons of vitamin C, this can lead to calcium oxalate kidney stones. Do you remember this mnemonic? Yup, first you iron your clothes, then you fold them, and then you put them in the closet. Because iron gets absorbed first in the duodenum, folate in the jejunum, and cobalamin in the terminal ileum. Thank you, Ellie, for this great mnemonic. Vitamin C can help with iron absorption. How come? Let's say that you ate the ferric form of iron. You cannot absorb ferric. You can only absorb ferrous, the Fe2+. Plus. And the mnemonic is Fe2 goes into the bloodstream. Who's gonna convert Fe3 into Fe2? Vitamin C is needed for this transformation. Where do I get vitamin C from? You have natural sources and you have artificial sources. Artificial is the supplements, medications. Natural sources, lemons, limes, lemonade, oranges, bananas, green leafy vegetables, and even peas. Some organisms can synthesize vitamin C, but humans cannot, therefore you have to consume it in your diet. Moreover, vitamin C is destroyed on cooking, storage, and processing. It's gotta be fresh, baby. Let's make Gordon Ramsay happy. What are the functions of vitamin C? It's an antioxidant. It aids in iron absorption. It aids in fibroblast and osteoblast formation. Fibroblast will give you connective tissue. Osteoblast will give you bones. Hydroxylation of proline and lysine residue. This will help you make collagen. You need collagen in your bones, in your vessels, and your hair. These three structures are destroyed when you have scurvy. Hydroxylation of dopamine into norepinephrine. Hydroxylation of tryptophan into serotonin. Hydroxylation of tyrosine into homogentisic acid. And that's why the kid in story number 12 had an alcaptonuria-like condition. He had dark discoloration everywhere, especially cartilages. Also, vitamin C can help you with reduction oxidation reactions. It can form THF, the famous folate, and it can form ferritin, the storage form of iron in your body. 
Benefits of vitamin C. We have direct benefits and we have indirect benefits. Indirect benefits, this is benefits of vitamin C. We have clinical benefits and we have biochemical benefits. We have talked about them and we will elaborate soon. Let's talk about the clinical uses. You can use vitamin C to treat a patient with scurvy. Awesome. You can use vitamin C to treat a patient with methemoglobinemia. You can use vitamin C to treat ulcers, burns, and even allergic reactions. This is controversial. Also, vitamin C might have an oxytocin-like action. If mommy is during labor, mommy is pushing and pushing and pushing, the doofus baby is not coming out, you can give oxytocin. I don't have oxytocin. Or mommy is super allergic to oxytocin. She's going to develop an anaphylaxis. What should I do? Try vitamin C. Will it work? I don't know. Let's hope for the best. What do you have to lose? But, 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 but the guidelines, who cares? Who gives a rip? I want you to be a freaking doctor, not a box checker. Vitamin C can help you make doozy collagen fiber. What's collagen? This is the main protein in the extracellular matrix. We have many types of collagen. Type 1, you find in bone. Type 2 is in cartilage, which means cartilage. Type 3, look at 3. 3 is very flexible. It's in your blood vessels because your blood vessels are super, super duper flexible. Type 4 is under the floor. This is the basement membrane. Type 5 is in your hair and the placenta. Look at this corkscrew. Got some coil action going. And therefore, if I have scurvy, collagen is toast. My bone is gonna suffer. Cartilages can suffer. Blood vessels suffer big time. I'm bleeding everywhere. Basement membranes suffer. My gums are weak. Even my teeth, they might start to fall off. Hair is corkscrew and curly if I have vitamin C deficiency, but you gotta ask the patient. Did you have coiled hair throughout your life? If the answer is yes, maybe it's not scurvy. If the answer is no, and this is a new phenomenon, it's pretty much gonna be scurvy. My clinical science is off the charts. Let's talk about the process of collagen synthesis. We call it collagen modification. It's a post-translational modification. Let's start. We start with pre-pro-collagen. Remember insulin? Pre-pro-insulin and pro... You remember this stuff here, right? Pre-pro-collagen, pro-collagen, and then you form hydroxylation. When you hear hydroxylation, I want you to say vitamin C. Hydroxylation of what? Of proline and lysine. What the flip are these? amino acids. And then you have a lovely triple helix with hydroxyl ions. Where did I get from? From the hydroxylation process, doofus. What's the name of this enzyme? Anything that has hydroxylase at the end, doofus. All of this happened in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Now let's leave the RER and go to the cytosol. And then out of the cell, pro-collagen. And then it becomes tropo-collagen and then collagen fibrils, and then collagen fibers. If you have scurvy, which is vitamin C deficiency, you will not be able to hydroxylate your proline and lysine residue. Your collagen is gonna be pieces of trash. Your blood vessels will suffer. Bone is gonna suffer. Cartilage is gonna suffer. Hair is gonna suffer, etc. Collagen, baby. Here is proline by an enzyme known as a proto-collagen proline hydroxylase, which requires vitamin C, will give you hydroxyproline. Lysine, by an enzyme known as proto-collagen lysine hydroxylase, requires vitamin C as a cofactor, will get the hydroxylysine. Both of these will help you make robust collagen fibers. Vitamin C will help absorb iron, as we have discussed, and please watch my videos on iron absorption because they were epic. Vitamin C can help us make this doozy tetrahydrofolate, which will become dihydrofolate. During this step D, UMP will become DTMP. DTMP can help you make DNA. DNA can help you replicate your cell, regenerate your tissue. And that's why when you have scurvy, everything is not regenerating and you have poor wound healing abilities. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. The tetrahydrofolate is important because it gives you formal tetrahydrofolate, helps you with purine synthesis to make DNA and RNA. Therefore, vitamin C can help THF make DNA, so replication, and RNA, protein transcription and translation, and you'll end up with some very good proteins, including collagen. The active form of folate is known as tetrahydrofolate, and that's why vitamin C is just awesome. What kind of reaction is this? It's a reduction reaction. Remember? Redox reaction. Vitamin C can help with reduction oxidation reactions. As you know, your adrenal gland has a cortex, comes from the mesoderm, and a medulla comes from the ectoderm, specifically the neural crest cells. This adrenal medulla 
is a modified ganglion. Therefore, here is a preganglionic fiber secreting acetylcholine. It's going to stimulate your adrenal medulla, and then your adrenal medulla is going to secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine and maybe some dopamine. These three are known as your catecholamines. How do I make norepinephrine and epinephrine? Sing the song with me. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dope, dopamine, norepinephrine, epinephrine. Phenylalanine, tyrosine, dope, dopamine, noradrenaline, adrenaline. From dopamine to norepinephrine, you need a hydroxylase. Whenever you see hydroxylase, you can say vitamin C. Moreover, vitamin C also is a cofactor for this enzyme known as POH phenylpyruvate, which converts tyrosine into homogentisic acid. But hey, medicosis, let's say I have vitamin C deficiency. Wouldn't this decrease homogentisic acid and therefore I'm not gonna have those dark pigmentation of cartilages? Yes, my friend, theoretically, yes. But let's say I have vitamin C deficiency and this enzyme is not working. Tyrosine is gonna build up like crazy, okay? Eventually, eventually, some of this tyrosine, in fact, lots of it, will become homogentisic acid, even in absence of vitamin C, and this can lead to alcaptonuria-like symptoms. But let's say that I'm a normal subject and I have a normal level of vitamin C. It will convert tyrosine into homogentisic acid. Homogentisic acid will give you, eventually, fumarate into the TCA cycle gives you energy. Tryptophan to serotonin. Tryptophan has two paths. I can give you serotonin and therefore melatonin, or I can give you niacin. If I choose to give you serotonin, I need a hydroxylation reaction. Please provide vitamin C. Vitamin C as antioxidant. What do you mean by antioxidant? First, let me tell you what I mean by oxidant. Okay, an oxidant is something that, um, let's put it this way, I have good news, I have bad news. These oxidant materials known as free radicals or reactive oxygen species can kill your bacteria. Awesome. They can also kill your own cells. Not awesome. Medicosis. I don't want my own cells to die. There comes the free radical scavengers. These are your vitamins, including vitamin C. Vitamin C itself is antioxidant. Vitamin E is antioxidant. Vitamin C helps regenerate vitamin E. Both are antioxidants, so the reactive oxygen species can kiss your calcaneus. Here are those bad, harmful free radicals. These are reactive oxygen species. They can kill bacteria? Cool. They can kill your own cells? Not cool. How do I prevent this damage? You can detoxify them. How do I do it? You need vitamin E for this, but the vitamin E has to be in the reduced form of vitamin E. But after vitamin E is consumed to neutralize and detoxify the radicals, it will get oxidized. We want to replenish it back into the doozy reduced form, and vitamin C will do this. By the way, cigarette smoking has tons of free radicals, and this will consume all of vitamin C because it's working like crazy. And that's why if you smoke cigarettes, you may suffer from scurvy. Anything in life has pros and cons. Too little vitamins, you get vitamin deficiency. In this case, it is called scurvy. Too much vitamins, you get hypervitaminosis. In this case, it's hypervitaminosis C. Both are bad. Let's start by talking about vitamin C deficiencies, the bleeding sailor. The sailors were bleeding because they were not eating enough fresh fruits and vegetables because the voyage can take months or years. And of course, you cannot just bring like fresh lemons. They will be fresh for the first first like few days after this they are not fresh anymore moreover vitamin c gets destroyed on storage so when you store it for a long time it's no longer fresh this young girl had hypertension because of vitamin c deficiency the petechia that you see on this capillary fragility test is due to scurvy this person with saddle ecchymosis please remember these two words saddle ecchymosis think vitamin C deficiency. Has your professor heard of this? No, because he's a doofus. Back in the day, formula-fed infants were vitamin C deficient because the formula did not have vitamin C. How about today? Look at the look at the freaking label and the formula. If it says vitamin C, then it has vitamin C. Use your brain. Mommy's milk has enough vitamin C. Mommy's milk is not deficient of vitamin C. However, mommy's milk is deficient of three things. I call them the FEDK. Iron, vitamin D and vitamin K. Mommy's milk does not have enough iron, does not have enough vitamin D or enough vitamin K. Other than that, mommy's milk is just terrific. You cannot buy this on freaking Amazon. The baby had bruising and bleeding due to vitamin C deficiency. This old guy had curled hair. 
got some coiling action going and corkscrew hair due to vitamin C deficiency. This baby had those transverse ridging on his teeth due to vitamin C deficiency. Retroorbital bleeding complicated by proptosis due to vitamin C deficiency. Intracranial bleed, in this case it was subdural hemorrhage. And intravitreous hemorrhage was due to vitamin C deficiency. The soldier who has torn his gastrocnemius muscle, remember Achilles tendon, was suffering from vitamin C deficiency. What are the symptoms of vitamin C deficiency or scurvy? Swollen gums, bleeding gums, gum hypertrophy, capillary fragility, poor dentition, poor wound healing, iron deficiency anemia. With all of the symptoms of anemia, tired and pale, pale and tired. Sometimes I get angina, sometimes I have a flow murmur, also dizziness, exercise intolerance, shorts of breath, etc. But what's the most common cause of shorts of breath? Lack of physical fitness. Get your butt off the couch and go to the gym or run or do whatever. Corkscrew hair, provided that this is a new phenomenon, a new sign, and provided that the patient did not have corkscrew hair throughout his or her life. Easy bruising and petechia, not just petechia, petechia, purpura, or ecchymosis. Delayed wound healing, parafollicular hemorrhage, this is important, subperiosteal hemorrhage, and decreased immunity. What are the causes of gingival hyperplasia or gum hypertrophy or whatever? Phenytoin can do it, cyclosporin can do it, calcium channel blockers can do it, and yes, scurvy can do it for you. If you remember my bleeding and coagulation playlist, which was awesome, we have talked about hemostasis. You need many steps, vasoconstriction, plated plug, coagulation factors. Any problem in any of these steps, you can suffer from petechia purpura or ecchymosis. If I have primary hemostasis defect, namely my platelets are toast, I can get skin bleeding and mucosal bleeding. Skin bleeding include petechia, smallest, purpura, in between, ecchymosis, the biggest. These three are subcutaneous hematomas. One condition can cause a range of different stigmata. This is old school. Any defect in the vessel wall or platelets or coagulation factors can lead to subcutaneous hematoma, which will lead to petechia purpura or ecchymosis. In scurvy, the vessel is weak because there is no collagen, because there is no hydroxylation of proline or lysine residues because I do not have vitamin C. And that's why. I get petechia purpura ecchymosis and scurvy. Trauma, or scurvy for that matter, can cause any of these due to disruption of the vessel wall. Vitamin C deficiency can lead to iron deficiency anemia. And here is an example of a vitamin deficiency leading to a mineral deficiency. Patients with iron deficiency anemia like any anemia, tired and pale, pale and tired. Sometimes I have angina, sometimes I have a murmur. Also exercise intolerance, dizziness, shorts of breath and many others. Don't forget the koilonychia when your nail is like a spoon, you can pour water here. And restless leg syndrome. And the famous pica which is craving of anything. How do I diagnose vitamin C deficiency? And instead of spending thousands of dollars on some crazy sophisticated lab test, you can just give the patient vitamin C. If the symptoms improve, you have your diagnosis. Thank you, Mr. Obvious. Urine ascorbic acid saturation test, intradermal test, and the rumpel lead test, known as the Tony K test, also known as capillary fragility test. How do I do it? You mark an area, like a circle on the patient's forearm, the exact size of a US quota. Inflate the blood pressure cuff between 120 and 80 and wait for five minutes. If you see petechia in the circle, count them. If they are, I think, more than three or more than five, whatever, you have your diagnosis. But if you suspect scurvy, delay the reading of the petechia for 30 minutes. Vitamin C deficiency is bad. Hypervitaminosis C is also bad. It can lead to calcium oxalate kidney stones it can increase your iron toxicity because vitamin C helps iron absorption. Too much iron absorption will lead to increased iron toxicity, which is especially horrible if you already have hemochromatosis or if you receive repeated blood transfusions due to anemia, leukemia, sickle cell anemia, beta thalassemia, or any other disease. Moreover, in rats, Tons of vitamin C can lead to permanent diabetes due to damage of the beta cells of the pancreas. So everything is good within limits, cause there are no solutions in life, only freaking incremental trade-offs. Some pers for the pros. Iron overload can actually lead to scurvy. Oh, I don't understand, how come? 
because if you have iron overload, you have tons of iron to absorb. Yes, you will consume all of your vitamin C trying to help the iron, leaving less vitamin C for other organs, leading to scurvy. Your blood vessel is screwed because all of the vitamin C now is helping the iron. Perfect. Iron overload, hemochromatosis, plus excessive intake of vitamin C can worsen the iron overload. As I've said, vitamin C deficiency or copper deficiency can lead to delayed wound healing, specifically the second phase. Vitamin C plus methylene blue can treat methemoglobinemia. My mnemonic is when the patient is blue, give them methylene blue and vitamin C. Vitamin C deficiency increases excretion of phenylpyruvate, phenylactate, and homogentic acid, and that's why kid number 12 had alcaptonuria-like symptoms. Iron deficiency anemia can benefit from taking vitamin C. Oh, doctor, I have like a uh, heavy menstrual bleeding and I'm iron deficient. Yeah, take iron, also take vitamin C because it will help you absorb the iron by more than 10%. And this is true, whether you are deficient or you are a normal doofus. Sapera has famously said, I do not examine individual hairs unless I'm considering the diagnosis of scurvy. Notice, he did not say, I do not examine hair. He said, I do not examine individual hairs unless I'm considering scurvy because of the curly action, the coiled hairs, the corkscrew. Well, actually, I've never examined a patient's hair. Screw you. The same book also said, although scurvy is thought to be rare, it is not. It is simply unrecognized. The author continues, I saw two cases and was shown two more in a 10-month period while this chapter was in preparation. Man, because students today will be like, uh, I kind of sort of ish uh, showed up to the lecture, I read my professor's PowerPoint, and I got this medicine thing figured out. Therefore, I deserve respect. So you believe in predestination, you do not know anything yet, you ain't get nothing figured out, and you deserve no respect. How about that? I'm just joking because I want you to be excellent. Please watch my previous videos on vitamins because I had even more interesting stories. Lemon and lemonade is not just a good source for vitamin C, they help me differentiate between leukemia and lymphoma. Watch my video titled Distinctions in Oncology. I have videos about antibiotics on my website medicosisperfectionalis.com. It has 40 videos about antimicrobials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications. The next 27 students can get a 40% discount towards any course on my website. Just use discount code 40 off. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Now I'm gonna go squeeze some lemons.